Hey, welcome to your Soul Self Check mini workshop. I'm Lori. And today we're gonna tackle the subject that's a tough one, but it's one that too many of my clients and friends are dealing with, and that's how to process loss. You know, 2020 has really sucked for so many of us for a lot of reasons. We've experienced a lot of fear and a lot of loss, whether it's the loss of a livelihood, loss of a relationship, or the ultimate loss of a loved one through death. And I extend my heartfelt condolences to any of you that are dealing with any of that right now. I thought maybe I could offer you some information, some of it might be new, uh, to help you understand and bring you some comfort in a way that, you know, what hasn't been working for you to date. So let's start with two universal truths. First, we are a spiritual soul having a human experience. And second, our soul is made up of energy. And that energy is love. So the essence of who we are is love. That's why we come to this place, so that we can share love, learn through love, and be the love that we are. We have bodies so that we can tell each other apart until we have evolved enough to be able to read and recognize each other through energy. Now, I know that sounds weird or crazy to some of you, but I am here to testify that we can absolutely tell each other apart through our energy. When I channel angels, I know which angel I'm talking to by their energy. When I have channeled friends and family that have transitioned on, I know exactly who they are because their energy and their personality that I knew while they were here on earth is the exact same energy when they are in light form, as I call it. So yes, we are energy. And the reason I wanted to tell you that is so that you recognize that we transition into this experiment from energy into matter, and we transition out of it from matter back into the energy that we are. So whether you wanna look at the spiritual Swami Salami side of it, or the scientific fact, we are indeed, everything you see, whether it be person, animal, stuff, things, are all energy. You can see it because it's manifested energy. The energy in the, in the air that you can't see, that's unmanifested energy. So that is important for you to understand because what remains when your loved ones leave is their energy. And that's why the, the physical life you have together changes and ends, but the love never ends because it just transforms back into the essence of who we are. So with that little Swami Salami um, lesson in mind, I'd like to offer you a couple of things to think about and ways to change your perspective of looking at your loss. And hopefully this will help you navigate it in a much more gentle, peaceful way. First of all, we tend as human beings to choose to grieve our loved ones through that focus of lack of and loss. And when we grieve that way, and we only focus on the fact that they're no longer with us, we tend to not only become more and more fearful and sorrowful because we have no control over that because we think it's forever and done and they're gone. And the other thing it does, it's our human nature to glob on to more fear. So we, f we are sad and fearful of this loss and what that means, that lack in our life. But then we extend that out to what happens if this person goes or this person, what's gonna happen then? So we spiral out our grief into a fear ball that is all consuming and it makes the healing process so much harder and so much longer. So if we counterbalance the pain of loss by focusing on the joy of what we experience and what we are left with, 
which are the amazing memories of the love and the celebration and the joy we shared together. That is what helps us heal in loving lightness instead of the heaviness of fear. And when you choose to be grateful for everything that you shared and appreciate that person for everything they brought to your life when they were physically in your space, you honor them in a way that they deserve for the impact that they had on your life. The fact that they were very visible in your day-to-day -day life because they left such an impact on you. So choosing to celebrate one's life is how gratitude becomes part of our healing process. So the more that you can look at joy, gratitude, and appreciation, the more you not only help um, quicken your healing process, but you raise your frequencies to a level that they can then begin to communicate with you. So the whispers that you hear, the reminders somehow, or the thoughts that come in your mind of that person, that's all them letting you know that they see you, they're there, they feel you. The songs that you hear, the, the odd little coincidences of things that remind you of them, that's them just saying, hey, I'm still here. We have to learn to look and see with our heart, to feel their energy once they have transitioned from matter into energy. And when you learn to listen and love and see with your heart, your loved ones will always be with you. They will always be with you. So I hope this helps somewhat. I know it's hard and the, the feelings of loss are real, but focus on the joy, honor them for the incredible impact they made on your life, and know that the, as you live in joy and happiness, and peace of soul, you're raising your vibration so that you can then begin to experience them in energetic form. So remember, you are loved and supported by those seen and unseen. And you are loved, and you are loved, so act 